Hello YouTube, um, I'm back with another video, um, today's video we're going to replace the sump on an ideologic, um, part number 175896, this is going to be a slightly different from videos you probably saw before, I took the liberty of looking on YouTube last night just to see if there's any point in me doing this, because if there's, if there's other videos then there's no point in me making another one, but I found four and they're all a bit rough handed if you will a bit heavy handed snapping the sump out using a big screwdriver to leverage the heat exchanger and to just rip out the sump um very rough um, that's not how i do it so um this is going to be a slightly different version you might think to yourself why is he doing that i'm a bit uh more careful um in my approach i'm an engineer i'm not a rough rough hairy handed uh, plumber for a better word I mean I'm not saying plumbers are bad uh, <clears throat> but I, I I like to do it properly I like to take my time I like to do the job properly so you might see me doing something that you think why is he doing that or I don't do that when that's um, entirely the point of this to give you a different point of view this is not however ideal engineers necessarily do it but this is how I do it this video is for gas safe registered and trainee gas engineers under supervision. Please comply with the current regulations at the time. Right, so um, I've skipped a lot of the steps because uh, it's quite straightforward. Uh, I don't want to bore you with um, all the teeny tiny bits this video would take a long time um what i can tell you is i've removed the fuse from the fuse spur i've made sure the electrics is isolated i've turned the gas underneath the boiler i've drained the boiler i've recharged the expansion vessel um put a bit of grease on the on the schrader valve before i put the expansion vessel connection on and that kind of helps it stop it leaking um, as you can see here, I've removed the wiring harness on the thermistor, the float turbine and the transducer. On this side, um, I've removed the LB motor, fan harness, um, pump harness. I've removed all the wiring harnesses down this side, um, so we're free of anything. Um, catching on the boiler. I've removed the three manifold gas valve and the um, bracket that holds on the um, ignition unit. So, you know, the inside of the boiler is quite bare now. Uh, like I said, I've drained the boiler, I've disconnected the flow pipe off the um, hydraulic section, and I've disconnected. The return pipe of the return connection. Um, removed the bottom screw uh, that holds the heat exchanger in place, and I've um, loosened the top one. The fan can stay in. You don't need to remove the fan to do this. And I've just tucked the detection lead and ignition lead up. Now, because I've moved. Um, loosens the bolt and remove the flow and turn it. I can get the glare of I can pull the heat exchanger forward now. Which all I've got to do to get this sump out is pull down these three tabs. I normally do this with my grips. I'll see if I can do it like that. While well, I don't want it, I can warm up. Maybe I can. I'll get it set up. And then uh, I'll show you how to get it out. So, I've removed the three tabs off the front of the sump. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to pull the sump down, push it back towards the boiler, pull it down and it should come out. Um, this is, might be hard with one hand. But uh, let's see what we can do. So 
pump, so that was much easier than um, leveraging it out with a screwdriver because you can damage the soft aluminium plate there. Uh, you know, you're draining the water down, you're disconnecting the connections and you're, you're able to move the heat exchanger forward. Uh, and it's easy to get it back on. I'll grease up the sump and I'll show you how we get it back on. So we're gonna try a one-handed sump change. Um, before I do try and put this in with one hand, I'll just let you know that any joint that you ever take off, you clean it up, grease it, and you check the, the uh, O-rings or washers. These connections here, I'm pretty, very pretty confident that because I've cleaned up this brass, I've greased it, I've not changed the O-rings, and I'm pretty sure because I've done what I've done, I'll we'll go back on and not like, if they are damaged, obviously you're gonna have to replace them, but in my case, I'm pretty sure that these won't leak like, because I've cleaned them and I've greased them. Um, I've greased the bottom of the heat exchanger and I've greased uh, this new sump. So let's see if I can get it in. One hand. So back goes on first. Put it up. I'm going to give you a chance. You push it up on the back first. you can feel the clip on the lug on the heat exchanger and you can also feel the gap between the heat exchanger and the sump um, that's not enough for me uh, this one's I don't think so I'll just I can feel the back ones in there on uh, but I've also got this um, a little mirror so what I do I shine it up the back with my torch can't really show you and I just look up the back and check all the connections I can't really do this uh, with one hand I need two hands uh, so I'm not gonna have to film that but, but I'm just gonna show you I'm just showing you what I do so I'm gonna put the phone down I'm gonna make sure all these clips are connected um, to the heat exchanger and then uh, I'll assemble in reverse order all connect, return up, connect the floor up, put the um, bolts back in the heat exchanger and then I'll refit the ignition unit bracket, gas valve and I'll refit the wiring harnesses and I'll, I'll come back to you in a little while. So they are on, this one wasn't on properly, so I'll just push it on. Uh, the back ones were in. Yeah, I'll talk about this uh, return connection. It's a it's a composite um, thread. I've seen a couple of videos. I've seen all oh, people have uh, read comments on. Seem to be very scared of cross threading. Uh, a brass nut on a composite thread and I've never <laughs> touched wood. I've never I've never done that before. I think you've just got to, like I said, grease it. Um be very careful with it. But I've never ever cross threaded uh the nut on the pump. If you're struggling to get this connection on after replacing the heat exchanger or the sump, but you you make sure this is loose so this heat exchanger can wiggle and you can actually pull the pump forward back and two and you can wiggle this connection on it went on really easy for me because I've greased it uh, it's, you know, 
there is no problem with a, with a, a composite lock, as long as you take your time, you clean up the thread and you grease it properly, you won't have a problem, uh, and the same with this. Uh, Because I've greased it and cleaned it up, I just go on. Really easy. And also, somebody mentioned that because this sun's cracked, it leaks products of combustion. It doesn't leak products of combustion. Um, the crack doesn't go all the way through for one. It leaks water and liquids and gases work differently. Um, if you know about particles of liquids and water and how particles of gases and water differ, how gas particles are very erratic and water particles stick together and all the, you know, science, whatever you want to call it, uh, about gas particles. This sump, even though it's cracked, does not leak products of combustion. Okay, I'll start tightening things up and I'll put the boiler back together and I'll, uh, I'll come back to you soon. Okay, so isolation valves on, gas isolation valve on. Uh, I've tightened up the um, that black drain plug at the back. I always use that black drain plug. Um, I see some people use the filament. The problem I get with the filament is because I don't seem to get all the water drained out of the boiler so i use that black plug at the back if you do don't tighten it up too much just give it a nip when you finish um tighten it back up don't really you know be strong just nip it so you can feel it nip and then that's all you need um i'll put the black drain plug back in the boiler that's very important to get that back in otherwise the boiler's not room sealed and make sure all these grommets are uh, are in on both sides uh, it's important that them grommets are in again it's not room sealed it's not i see many times i'm missing when i go to boilers um so we're going to fill it up now i've put the wiring harnesses back on the boiler and <coughs> i wouldn't normally <coughs> connect it all back up i fill it first just to make sure um i'm gonna check them joints uh, before I start putting the semester uh, the turbine harness and the fan harness and the gas fan harness and the gas fan. Um, you know, I'd, I'd leave them off and fill it first and check them joints, but I'm quite confident that they're not going to leak, so for the purposes of this video, I've just um, kept it all back up, fans back on. Emissions back on, detection back on. I put the leads back on in the same order. I'm a bit, I'm a bit, uh, you know, about how the cables go back. I make sure they go back and they're not twisted. They're all nice and straight and free from any um, damage, if you will. Uh, so this is something I do. Uh, boiler's filled up now. Um, so yeah, that's how you change the sump. I've not put the trap in so you can see. I'm going to clean the trap. And then I'm going to do my 26 nine checks. But that's it. Disconnect the floor and return. It makes it so much easier. So much a nice, neater, better job. Okay, thanks for watching.